Hey guys, I was just checking the water conditions this morning for spear fishing and they are looking so, so good. The wind, the water, the waves, even the local webcams are showing really awesome conditions. It's a blue sky, sunny day out. Uh, I'm gonna get my gear together, head down to the beach. If I catch something good, I'll bring it back here for lunch and do a catch and cook. So when I was diving down here, looking into this little cave, I didn't expect to see a uh, lobster. I've dove this beach before at nighttime. There are a lot of lobster out at nighttime. So it made sense that they're in there. So that was sort of cool to see. This right here is a snowflake eel. I've never actually seen one swim backwards like that before. Diving down here, I saw a couple little holes or pukas and often if you just stick a stick or if you have a spear gun with you, just stick the tip of a, a spear in there. You're not actually trying to poke the octopus, you're just trying to tease it a little bit and he'll totally grab on your arm or the stick or whatever you put in there, even your finger if he's not in there very deep. Just stick your hand in there and uh, they'll just latch right on and, and sort of bring themselves out. The bigger red octopus can technically kind of bite a little bit through the beak and the bottom of their head, but I've never had that happen, especially through a glove or a wetsuit. Wanna touch him? He's super slimy. All right, getting to the spear fishing finally. You can see I was tossing a spoon there. The spoon was just falling at the end of that first clip. And if you don't use spoons when you spear fish or if you're new to spear fishing, the spoon can help bring in some fish. Again, I throw it here again and it totally catches the attention of a small papillo, which is a, a small jack or trevally. And you can see him here coming right back towards me and he was coming for that spoon. And then when he realized the spoon had already fallen or he didn't see it anymore, uh, he started to turn, which was perfect timing for my shot. He was close enough and was an easy shot. He wasn't a big one. I mean, this was, I think it measured 14 and a half or 15 and a half inches, which minimum size where I am is 10 inch but they can make for really good tasting fish at this size. And so I, I made the shot. And then on the way back to my float, I actually saw some, some shells down there on the bottom. They're just super reflective. They were probably just recently cracked open by a crab or something overnight.
going to scale them and I'm going to gut them and then take them back home and cook them. Uh, also out there, you might have seen I grabbed some shells. I don't know if they're uh, mother of pearl or abalone shells or whatever they are, but they're so cool, so reflective. When you see them underwater, they're like a mirror. So I'm just collecting these. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to put them all together at some point, in little pieces like a mosaic or something, and create a, a giant mirror. I don't know, whatever it might be, but uh, those are just really cool finds out there in the ocean. So let's get uh, cutting here and let's prep them up for cooking. All right, guys, I'm back in my place. I'm ready to cook this fish up. Um, I'm hoping it tastes really good. I've caught these before. This is a medium small uh, one. So the smaller ones can actually taste really good. The really big ones actually can have some buildup of the toxins and stuff. So there's a ciguatera toxin in reef fish or, or in uh, tropical fish like this. So uh, these smaller ones taste really awesome. And uh, I'm hoping to cook it two different ways. I'm actually thinking, I've never tried this before, but taking a banana leaf and almost like steaming it inside the banana leaf to see if there's any extra flavor, um, to see if the spices and stuff kind of really infuse in there. Um, I'm not an expert chef whatsoever, so it's just gonna be sort of winging it and trying it my own way. Uh, the other way is maybe taking the other filet and putting it just sort of on the pan and doing it really simply. So let's try it out. So today for this, uh, just the filet piece, the simple piece, all I'm gonna use is some salt, pepper, uh, some butter, and just try it up like that. Really simple, that's how I normally cook my fish. Usually add a bit of lemon or a lime if I have one handy, but just going really simple today with this piece. All right, for the other side of the fish, um, I'm gonna flip it over here and actually take the scales off because I wanna cook it with the skin inside the banana leaf. Uh, the scales on these uh, Trevally, these jacks, are really fine and are super easy to just use a knife. If you have a really nice uh, knife, you might not want to, you know, sort of dull it using, using the, your nice fillet knife. This is going really easy. It's super satisfying you so, you, with these fish that have the scales that come off really easily. It's so fast. It takes you like one minute to do this. Uh, and it's uh, you don't really have any scales left behind. I might give it a quick rinse as well Just to get rid of all the small scales because they kind of get everywhere um, And then we're ready to wrap it up in the leaf I have not done this before. I did a real quick search online and it looks like you actually have to heat it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna put it over my, uh, my grill. It's totally changing color and it looks like it's almost getting wet. So the oils and stuff are coming out of the leaf. That's exactly what they said is supposed to happen. All right, so I've got my spices all on here. I've threw, thrown the mango on there. The mango is not intended. I don't plan on eating it. I'm just hoping it imparts some flavor. So I just kind of, you know, chucked it in there. Nothing pretty. Um, now I've got some of that coconut milk. I'm barely going to put any coconut milk in here. Um, it's just hopefully going to add a little bit of that tropical flavor. That's probably enough right there. We'll see how that does. I know with Thai food, I've had Thai food once or twice and they use a lot of coconut milk with the fish and stuff, so maybe I'll add something cool to the taste. 
Oh, and the last thing I need to add is some butter. I'm gonna just add a whole bunch of butter. I expect it to maybe melt in there and kind of spread itself out. So there we go. Hopefully this turns into a big flavor bomb and uh, is really good. All right. So, so far it's working out better than I thought it might. This looks really cool, like a sweet little package. You know, it's got my fish in there, all the flavor and the ingredients. I'm gonna try to put it on the grill, see if it all stays together and hopefully this cooks. I'm guessing it's gonna take like, maybe like eight to 12 minutes max probably. I didn't wanna put it directly on my grill itself. I put one of these stainless steel grill mats on there. You guys might also have those. They're like a rubber silicone grill mat that's pretty popular right now as well. Uh, so we'll see how this works out. I just wanted a little bit of a barrier so the heat wasn't directly, the flames weren't directly hitting the actual banana leaf, but it's looking pretty cool. I'm hoping this works out well. Okay, so we've got the banana leaf in there cooking. Looks like the grill's getting up to about almost 310, 315. Uh, hopefully it gets a little higher maybe, but also the fish here on the side pan I've started cooking up. So the flame's going, and this is our more simple preparation. All right guys, so I think we're getting really close here. I did end up flipping this piece just because it was thicker in the middle, uh, and kind of the thinner parts were cooking first, so, oh yeah, that looks, that looks amazing. I just put it on the other side for like, two minutes or so and it just cooked that thicker part right in the middle up. Man, that's looking done right there. And if we go over to the grill or banana leaf, whoa, that thing is looking crispy. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, this banana leaf, I think when I'm, if I remove this, I don't think it's going back on there, but. Wow, Woo. a little bit of a flare up there. This is looking better than I expected. Wow, man, you can see, yeah, you can see the juices just bubbling. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this piece and take this off of there. It's definitely done cooking and we're gonna try that out in just a second, but wow, take a look at how well that cooked. There he is, those Predator Trevally Jacks, man. They got some pretty cool teeth, especially the big ones, not this guy. But I'm thinking this looks cooked. I can see a little piece right there that's just white. The white meat looks really good through there. So instead of taking this off, I think I'm just gonna try to put a fork in here and try it out and guys like, you remember I, I uh, scaled this fish, so I should be able to just, oh yeah, take a look at that. Now that piece has a bit of the, it's closer to the bloodline, so it has some of the darker sort of meat there, but look underneath, like I bet you I can just peel the skin right back, yep. Oh my goodness, wow. Oh yeah, that's cooked all the way through and it's so moist and soft. Like I actually, I thought it was gonna work, but man, this has worked out far better than I thought. Let's uh, give that a try. Yeah, that's delicious. You know, I taste a bit of the mango and a bit of the coconut milk maybe, but I don't know that it changed the flavor dramatically. I'm thinking the, the spices had the most effect on this. Um, and I definitely taste, you know, the butter and maybe some of the garlic powder, but this is awesome. Next up, I'm gonna try just the simple preparation here and it looks great. So I'm expecting it to be really good. You know, when you're catching the fresh fish like this and then cooking it up, it, it just is so fresh and so perfect. You know, it's not free frozen, it's not freezer burnt, it's not, it's just so good and so moist. Uh, but I'm sure you guys can see that. That is perfectly cooked. Let's give it a try. Wow. So 
I have to say, I actually like this better than the banana leaf. I don't know what it is, but it is just, uh, oh yeah. It's just perfect flavor wise. You know, I've tasted the butter again, the salt, the pepper. Uh, there's no mango, hence of mango obviously, or the coconut milk, but wow. You know what? This is the winner today. I'm gonna find out though. I'm gonna use that banana leaf again. I was, you know, genuinely surprised at how well it worked out. The banana leaf just kept all the moisture and everything in there so well. I've never cooked with banana leaf before and I'm uh, definitely gonna do it again. Maybe next time I'll try something else in the banana leaf just to infuse more flavor. I've heard of like lemongrass. I've never cooked with lemongrass, but maybe some lemongrass, uh, some lemons. I don't know, maybe I'll go lower temperature and cook it for a lot longer in the banana leaf so more flavor gets sort of infused into the fish. I don't know if you guys have any ideas, if you've cooked with, with banana leaves before, let me know what to do in the uh, comments below. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one. If you like watching awesome blue, hit subscribe and thumbs up too. Exploring the ocean, swimming with sharks, shooting big fish, hit it right on the mark. Channel, channel with your friends, watch every day until the just spending time finding different ways just to blow your mind. Are you ready? Let's go. Watch a video. Let's play Chanel on this awesome show.